page 52, all right? Let's go. Owner's insurance. And by the way, it could be a house or a, a condominium, right? So it doesn't matter. If you own it, you need to actually insure the property itself as well. Because now you're the owner, right? You're responsible. So <clears throat> formula to calculate insurance, watch this. Works for tenant and home insurance. So I made sure when I made this formula, it works exactly the same, except for a different table. Should I add that different, different table? Okay. Just add a few exclamation marks, but not too many, right? There you go. Different table. Now grab your tables and let's uh, let's look at it before we use it. I'll tell you the main difference. You all have your pink tables in front of you, right? Okay, zoom up. Yeah, just flip one over. Flip one over from the tenant and look at this scary one. Doesn't it look scary? Maybe not. Listen, listen to the difference. Before the tenant insurance, it was it didn't matter where you lived in Manitoba, everybody paid the same, right? Now you have Metro Winnipeg, which is Winnipeg, area two, area three, area four. You have four different areas, and each area has standard and comprehensive, right? So before when we did when we did the apartments, you were just down to that one area because like, it's all the same now you have four different areas so that's what makes this table a little scarier and what is your max here what's the maximum coverage are you all with me yeah what's the maximum coverage Two hundred thousand, right not 75 Two hundred thousand, and it makes sense right because the building and your stuff it's way more than seventy-five thousand. um but watch this anything on this chart is still 500 bucks and a $200 deductible is still watched down here where my finger is. It's 10% uh, more. So, so everything else is exactly the same. Um, why do you think there's different areas? Why, why isn't it the same no matter where you live? Why, why are the premiums different if you live somewhere out? Guys, watch this. Area 234 is outside the city. Why would it be different? What's that? It's just outside of Winnipeg, like it's not. It's still in the province. It is still in the province, but why would it be different rates? How busy it might be? If there's a fire, if there's a fire, who do you call? Ghostbusters. You call nine one one, right? Do you think it's going to take them longer to get to your place out there than in Winnipeg? Does it does time matter when there's a fire? In Winnipeg, there's a pretty good chance that the fire department will get there within minutes. And if you have a fire, they will extinguish it. And most of your home, as well as your stuff, can be recovered. Okay? Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm not saying always, but chances. If you're outside the city, most municipalities have volunteer firefighters. Have you ever heard of that? volunteer firefighters what that means is their firefighters all have regular jobs and when they get a call like my buddy is one so he will work out in construction and then his phone rings and says hey you got to come in are you in so you just swipe that you're coming so you have to drive from wherever you're working in the city to the fire hall hop on the truck and then go out to the fire there is nobody like there permanently full time. So he basically says that by the time they get to the fire, it's just to control it, but it's usually a total loss. Like if your house catches fire out there, it's usually a total loss. So they have to rebuild the entire thing. So it's going to cost more because you're fur sometimes you're further away from a fire hall. Sometimes it's just because it's going to take longer for them to arrive. Right. So that's why there's different areas. That's just basically what it comes down to. Does this, have anybody noticed this here? The BOIC calculator? What is that? 
that's just basically a standard. This is a standard that the insurance companies have for insuring your, your property. So don't let that scare you. It's just basically the coverage amount you need, okay? Now, let's do an example. You ready? Jump in. We'll do two examples. I will tell you already what the difference is. The first one will have no overage. The second one will have overage. That's basically the only difference. So come with me. Brand owns a house. Highlight that part because now it's homeowner's insurance. We are in Metro Winnipeg. Sometimes it's just as Winnipeg. It's the same thing. Don't let the Metro throw you off. You want 175,000 worth of coverage, comprehensive, $200 deductible. What's the annual rate before and after tax? Okay. Okay. That was somewhat important later. Um, so we go with insurance. Watch this, insurance. Remember what I said about this value here? This is a must have, you have to go pick a value. So we're gonna figure that out. So grab your table. Grab your table, find the coverage amount. Go down to 175. You are under Metro Winnipeg. <laughs> You're on, under Metro Winnipeg, right? And it is comprehensive, sorry. Comprehensive, 175,000, that's 668. Right? This is the number you must pick. So you are narrowed it down to 668. So write that down. Plus, overage times dollar amount over a thousand. That is a no-no, right? That one we're not gonna use. So this whole thing turns into zero. There is no overage charge. You're within the 200 grand. You're not going past 200,000. Are we gonna need to multiply this by 1.1? You betcha, because there's $200 deductible. And it does ask for after tax as well. So we're gonna, this after tax part is gonna take care of that. So the scariest part is getting your numbers from the table, which shouldn't be that scary. So really it's 668 times 1.10 times 1.07. That's 786.24. Oh, forgot the before and after tax. Can you uh, bear with me here? Sorry. If it had said after tax, I could have just done it like that. But I'm going to go 668 times 1.1. 1 .1. So that's 734.80 times 1.07, and I'm just gonna label this as before tax, and then I'm gonna multiply it by 1.07 to get the 786.24 after tax. So on the test, or for most of the things you're gonna do for me in terms of assessment, I will, I will stop, like I'll say either just before or after, I won't make you do both, okay? But for notes, I'm asking you to find the before and the after tax. All right. I'm gonna do one more example, and that's it for today. Because I know you're tired. Uh, I will expect you to try some on your own, because by now, insurance shouldn't be uh, that difficult for you anymore. So let's do the next one. Jill owns a house in Pine Falls, that's outside of Winnipeg, within eight miles of a fire hydrant. That's weird, isn't it? But it, a couple of years, like 10, 15, 
15 years ago, you would have had to know what does that mean within being within eight miles of a fire hydrant. We had like a chart and then you would determine that that's area three. So that's where you live. She wants $225,000 of standard insurance with a $500 deductible. And watch this, this is before taxes. Oh, you got it already? Okay. Insurance is equal to? You grab the number first, you find it. What number should I put in here? Don't tell me, just go find it. What number would you put here? Practice that. Caleb, I heard you. You got it right. 726? Yeah. Should I just stop there? I'm going over, right? I'm going over. So I'm going to do that on the side here. I really apologize. I did not want it to bleed over like that. But it is what it is. So I'm going to go 225 minus 200,000. This is my max. Okay. 200,000 is the max. So Overage. You only have overage if you are over, okay? When you're over the max. Other than that, you don't have to worry about that. So take this number, and we're gonna go plus 25,000 times. This is the trickier part, but not really, okay? So we went 726. We'll find 726 is right here, right? You went area three standard, we maxed out. So we need to grab this number right here, the 355. You're gonna pay that much extra for every thousand dollars of loan. Make sure you write that down. So two things you grab from the table. Do you need this part? No, because it's a $500 deductible. Boom. Do you need this part? It's before taxes. I hope this helps you. I do this on purpose to see, like, you, you just don't include that. And let's clean this up. 726 plus, you should all clicking, be clicking with your calculators at this point. I think, I think, I'm just saying. 8875. That's it, like you're really just left with what's in here. You don't add the $200 deductible fee, you don't add taxes, right? So this is just how it goes. I'm gonna add 726, so this is 814.75. That's a $500 deductible before taxes, okay? So here, page 53, 256, this is tenant plus home owner, right? If you want to practice, which I think you should, and I know, I know you're going to tell me, Mr. Dixon, I have this bio test I'm studying for or chemistry, physics. I know that. I was a student too, right? but try to fit in a few. So let's say you tell yourself, I'm gonna do four questions. I'm, I'm, I would be all right with that. I would like you to do all of them. The key is posted yesterday already. I posted all of these pages uh, yesterday, November 21st. 